Welcome to Old Iron Machine Works. Um, in this video, um, recently I picked up this Monarch lathe. It is a 16 inch 1955 um, with an 18 and a half inch swing, 78 inch between centers. And when I bought it, um, it would not go in the high range. My buddy was there today at the auction. And this video is going to be more about just the repair the, on the shifting fork um, when I got it home I pulled the cover off and got into it and basically found where the shifting fork the bottom ear broke off apparently according to Monarch it's kind of a common problem with these things uh, so this video is more about just the repair of the arm I did film the whole process of removing the spindle and putting it back in right here uh, we've established that that nut was probably placed in there purposely to hold it into low range um, otherwise it would creep over and then uh, kind of hard on the, the dog ears um, I would have filmed the entire remove spindle and put spindle back in uh, unfortunately uh, you have to remove the spindle to get the fork out of the lathe. Here you can see where the shifting lever is going up and down, but the collar does not move. The bottom ear on that collar is broke off. Here's a picture uh, showing the shifting fork. And right where that pin's pointed on the bottom is that ear is where it's broke off. Here I'm at my close friend's. He bought a donor lathe for parts. It is basically, I believe this is a 52, 1952-53. Um, it is also a 16 inch lathe, but this is a 24 and a half inch swing. In the 16 inch lathes, they had an 18 and a half inch swing, a 20 and a half, which um, Aaron had always sent in the shop. I believe his is a 20 and a half. And then this one is 24 and a half. But all the internal guts are all the same. So we pulled the fork out of his. Unfortunately, when we got it out, it was also broken and repaired. If anybody is looking for any parts in the headstock for a Series 60 or 61 16 inch Monarch lathe, um, please shoot me an email. Okay, this is the repaired fork. I wasn't real thrilled with it, but it does look like a, it does look like a strong repair. Um, so I'm just gonna go with it. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, grind it. Um, this is the collar that is splined right to the shaft. And as soon as this engages with this gear, it drives it. Well, you can see here, it still, still has a lot of engagement where it drives. But what happens is by shifting with it and moving, it kind of flares those corners off so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to go ahead and grind and blend that in a little bit i'm not going to touch this area that area right there is still the drive area and i'll do the same thing let me see here on this one here you can see the drive area still looks pretty good i just want to get rid of some of this burring going on here Okay, anyway, and I went to put the shaft in, and it was really tight at the back of the bushing, um, and the bushing was moving. So I went ahead and uh, pulled the bushing out, Loctited it, and took my 7-8 frame, 
ran the ream through it. And now I should be ready to uh, should be ready to go back in. Okay, we got this set screw out. We got this set screw on this lock collar backed out. I'm gonna leave it because it was staked and pretty tight, so it's backed off. It's free from the shaft. What we had here is just a cork, gasket, and a little cap that had three screws. This went through that cap and kind of kept the pin uh, located in there. What we're gonna do, I'll probably either get a slide hammer or 5 16 course thread all thread that I can screw in. I'm touching in right now. That we could just put a big washer and then just start pulling that pin. That pin's gotta pull all the way out here in order to lift this fork up and out of there. Okay, here I'm jumping back over to the donor lathe. I'm going to show the plate on the outside with the three screws. There should not be a hole in it. That plate seals it off. You take the three screws out, take the plate off, and then you reach inside and you pull the shaft out. The only thing that holds the shaft in are the set screws on the inside. Mine had a hole in it with a bolt screwed in. That bolt should not be there and the hole should not be there. All right, now that the other one's hanging up, I am going to clean up the original one that came out of my lathe. And I am going to repair the broken ear. Here I'm knocking the bushing out. This is the side of the fork that I will be uh, bracing on. So I wanted to get the bronze bushing out of there. And then after the repair, then I'll, you know, drive it back in. Loctite it also. Here I'm kind of laying it out where I'm going to cut it off. Cast iron is really garbage as far as strength. You know, not, not much. Uh, it doesn't take much to break. So I will be replacing the ear uh, with a chunk of steel. Um, but the strength will come with how much how much bonding area, or should I say bonding surface area, I'll get when uh, brazing. So rather than just trying to do that little section where it broke off, I'm just trying to give me a little bit more area to have a little bit more brazing on. Here I just cut off a little chunk right out of the center of a piece of 5 uh, eighths thick plate. I believe that was a little Kubota bracket. Probably held a uh, maybe a loader or something I've had kicking around forever. Here I just took a little uh, square piece of uh, material that's exactly 5 eighths thick and then just clamped up my new piece right to it and once I got plenty of weld on the back side then I just pulled that piece out and then finished finished filling it in with brazing rod.
Okay, here's the repaired fork. This is the original fork that came out of my lathe. When I bought it, it already had the ear broke off. This repair that I just did, this is now a chunk of steel braves to the cast iron. Cast iron's garbage and it's much stronger now um, and a lot more weld as you've seen in the video of the repair. Got the headstock all cleaned up. Or should I say as good as I'm going to be able to get it. So it's ready to uh, start getting the fork in and getting the shaft back in. Okay, got the fork back in. Definitely a repair that uh, nobody will probably ever see. And All right, we got the shaft started going through. Got it through the gear. There's a thrust washer inside of there. Through this blind collar. Through this gear. Then down here between the bearing, there is another spacer. That's also a thrust that goes between the bearing. It's a thrust that goes between the bearing and this gear. And now we got to take the, this collar, slide it all the way into here, now we're ready to drop this one in. So I'll just have to break, bring the shaft back just a little bit. Now this is where as soon as I start going through there. As soon as I have access to the key, I need to start putting the woodrow keys in. Later on, I will do a more in-depth video of pulling the shaft out and installing it. Anyway, I appreciate it very much for anybody that took the time to check out the video. And thumbs up and uh, subscribe is always nice. Thanks for watching.